how do you get the purple check mark? We gotta average 75 viewers. We have to average 75 viewers, sugar dust. There's also some other requirements, uh, you know, stream hours and all that, but I already hit all that. The only thing I'm not doing is averaging 75 viewers. We're close because I had days where we streamed to 200, to like 200 and 150 people on average. So those were big days. Hi, I'm Hazel. Oh, you see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's pause the music. Oh, God, I just fucking played the intro. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. Here we go. Well, let's play uh, this Belgular video while we wait for servers to come back up. Welcome back. Right, straight up, I'm just no, really you. damn happy about this. So Blizzard announced a seemingly off your pretty brilliant feature, right now, yeah. totally out of the blue, and it's coming soon. The one concern that people have had, I think, is, right, Dragonflight, good start, but can they actually keep it going? Right? Where's the marathon pace? Well, they keep the game feeling decent, you know? We want the baseline to rise from what we came to expect. Hate and if you remember <laughs> a few of us praising some FF14 events, also good news. I mean, hell, they've said this is just the beginning. So the new feature is called the Trading Post. It's going to be on the PTR soon, More based like on 80. what people have found, the like sort of decky people. And they've actually had a 10.0.5 PTR build ready to go. And I think the idea that this is on a 0.5 is a pretty damn good sign. It opens yeah. the door for, well, yeah, substantial, like, side content updates between main numbered batches, which is awesome. Dope monthly content, just like ours. Hit up the link down below for Death Knight Month loot, which is awesome, and a whole bunch the more. The best month. Podcast, Death exactly. Knight Month. Thanks, guys. Like, legit helping pay the bills with that. Let's roll. Okay, a new set of traders called TW and Zen Shiri. Uh, trading posts are moving in we to Stormwind about and Orgrimmar. TW is just outside the Mage District, and Zen Shiri trading post is just about like near Gromash Hall. Now, do you remember those capital city mystery quest lines that appeared on beta and nobody knew what these people were doing? That was actually the background for this feature being set up. Now, what's neat here is that the storefronts actually. I remember we were guessing that these were like uh, dragon holding spots or something or mount hubs. I don't know, but it's funny. Now we see they're the trading posts. They change with these trading posts. They've got transmogs on mannequins, pets at their feet, mounts in the stable. So it actually is quite rich and visually represented in the game. And also the things sold by these traders are not limited by the current content in the game. It's not just recycling old content. They said they're actually going to be making some new rewards for this as well. What's the deal with the trading posts? How do they work? To obtain the items, you need to get a new currency that's called Trader's Tender. Now you can earn this currency in two different ways. By logging in, this was my only disappointment with this, is there's another currency. As if we don't have enough currencies in WoW already. And heading to the trading post, you can collect 500 traders tender every month from a chest called the collector's cash. That's it. Basically, as long as you're subbed, that will be there. It'll be there the first of every month, so there's like no funny business uh, about the dates. You get 500 a month that way. Then you can earn up to 500 more Traders Tender by completing monthly activities that are listed in the Traveler's Log. This is what it looks like, and you can see that it's got a rotating set of activities each month. So basically you can pick and choose there. That includes completing quests, completing battlegrounds, doing holiday events, even things like running Mythic Plus dungeons and raids. But there's also some special activities that are uniquely designed around the theme of the month. And if you look at the UI here, you can see the different categories as well as the month. Depending on these themes and, and how these activities are, I'm, I'm really excited for this stuff. I think this is a very cool feature. Some people were like, oh no, they brought Battle Pass into WoW. I'm like, calm your fucking asses down. We pay monthly for this game, no matter what. This isn't a monthly battle pass. You're paying to fucking play. This is an added feature on top of your sub. You're not paying extra for this. So I was happy they put it in the game. I like it. Monthly theme, they've got uh, like things like just show love to the dragon aspects, which I assume would just be go to the aspects and type in like the love emote on them. So or slash I hug. assume just like, little thematic things to do in the world that they will add every month in addition to you know if you're doing your dungeons raids etc 
Now, there's a pretty broad amount of stuff here, and what I like about the design, from what I can tell so far, is that if you're purely like a dungeon and raid person, well, that seems to be okay because you'll earn currency, I assume, by doing what you were doing anyway. I mean, even in the little like special activity, uh, thing in the UI mockup, you can see it's one of them is resurrecting players. If you're doing dungeons and raids, you'll be doing that, right? The thing though is that for loads of other players, players who don't fit into playing the kind of three pillars of World of Warcraft at the end game, well, this will give them way more diversified things to do. So at the start of each month, the traders get new items and the traveler's log will be updated with new activities. If you miss out on any items, they will rotate back into the trader's inventory in future months, but there's also a freeze slot on the trader's UI. If there's an item you really want, but let's say you only get a thousand a month, the two things that you'd love to get amounts to like 1800, you could take one of the expensive ones and freeze it. You can actually prevent uh, at least one of the items from being refreshed uh, in, in your store. I think that's nice. Now, this also will include cosmetics from uh, promotions that are no longer available. Exactly. Players only gain 100% of it. It's a good thing. Yep. 100%. Yep. Uh, this is 100% free and Brizzard doesn't earn anything from it. Exactly. In fact, they're putting store mounts and shit on it. They're putting the Celestial Steed. If anything, they're going to lose money. Now, odds are they're going to put mounts that are, like, you know, less popular to buy. They're not going to put the most recent Storm out on there. But the nice thing is, is they are doing that. So I think that's great. It's a way to, it's, people have been saying it for a long time. How do we get the store shit in the game? I pay $15 a month. There should be a way to earn some of this store, these store shit in the game. This is it. As well as items that are normally only available for cash. I imagine they'll add a skip token in the past store, one which day. Which is a kind of interesting one because if you hit up that like screenshot, you do see there's the Celestial State. Maybe they do that, Cydric. Maybe you're right. But um, in general, I think for you know, you're the typical person who pays $15 a month, this is only an addition. This is only a value add to your sub. For 900 tender. These, you know, these. If you want to spend more, you could. One you of the ways to. that people would kind of uh, defend their existence, I suppose, is saying, well, hey, you can just use the mount token, charge. right? You can convert that, uh, you know, gold to token, token to be net balance, then buy the mount. Yeah, it's a pretty damn uh, nice way for Blizzard to have a mount be sold. <laughs> But this is actually that just operating within the game. I suppose it's a play for retention over immediate money now. I would rather they do things to help retain me as a player by giving new things to do every month than to just pump promotions down my throat. Now, this being patch 10.0. What? What? Who's pumping what down Bellular's throat? 0.5, not 10.1, is uh, pretty awesome what? to me, right? One of the things that was really cool to the Legion expansion is there is a patch every 77 days. I think a fairly high percentage of our players will actually engage with this every month and get some nice new rewards that they would like. I mean, think about even like time walking, you know? That's fine, but they don't really get updated. It can get a bit old and stale. And whenever I initially posted about this on Twitter, unanimously positive feedback. And that included from people who follow me who I know are not into Dungeons and Raids, like people who want to play WoW for other reasons. And this seems extremely up their alley. But also a lot of pretty damn hardcore players, like say Dakor on um, on our team here, who's a cutting edge raider and uh, helps us with you know leading a lot of gameplay content. He's super excited about it, and a lot of people like I mean him too that have been super salty about the game, like me. We're pretty glowing about this, and that's nice. You know what I said about Dragonflight is okay. This does feel like the end of WoW has ended and now we're at the start of a new beginning. So wow, you know, it's went down like this. Now we've went up a bit, and the question is, can they keep the momentum going, yeah. or will they peter? The trajectory is totally in the right direction. It's totally going the right way, and our, our hope right now is that they keep it going the right way. Everything is looking good. Just about as good as these narrow mints. Yeah, I'm about to pop one in my mouth, energy and focus, baby. Caffeinated mints, caffeinated gum. Neuro does it all. Neuro does it all. Code SAM10 at checkout, exclamation point gum in the chat. Out. What I want to see is that momentum going, and I think this is actually that. Now, Holly Longdale, who is the vice president and executive producer of WoW, she tweeted, uh, we are only getting started 2023 and beyond. We are dedicating ourselves I honestly to don't know if they the delivered to Canada. We will be trying you probably stuff, find out if works, you go on there. Listening. We see you, we are you, more to come. I, I suppose you could take that as just, oh, it's an empty statement. But I think this is, I mean, you look at what's actually happening here. It's I can check later statement. for you. 
And this doesn't feel like the sort of thing that we would have just randomly got within uh, within Shadowlands. This is not happening in the Dragon Isles. This is happening in Stormwind and Orgrimmar. What that actually means is this is a new feature for World of Warcraft, not a new feature for Dragonflight. Not an exclusive expansion feature. Another big theme of this expansion. They are putting tons of shit in this game that is not just like Dragonflight only shit that's going to go away after the expansion goes away. They are using Dragonflight to lay the groundwork for what looks like what could be a very good WoW future. And that's a common theme all across here. Yeah. So to speak. And that's really good because in three or four years' time, I assume uh, they'll I'll still check be on your question. Sure it rotate is. through its things. And it will still be giving players things to do. And as Holly said, and as the blog post said, like, this is just the first version of it. Who knows how it will evolve? Could you just theme a month based on some of the more starter zones that we'll be nostalgic for, like, say, Westfall or the Barrens? You could have some special activities there, make some cool new armor sets, and bam. I think a lot of people would think, oh, awesome. I will go and get that thing in WoW this month. That's good for keeping the overall player base healthy and engaged. Another thing, I've talked uh, as well about wanting multiplicative designs, not just additive ones. And what I mean here is, okay, heritage armor with a quest. That's awesome, but it's one and it's done. Something like this though, they've made the bucket. They've made the category. So now if they just think, ah, shit lads, we've got a few people who have got some spare time in the office. What are they going to do? Well, maybe they could make a few cool little objectives for the next month one of these. Uh, True. And, or, you know, True. a future uh, trader's uh, post or trading post. And, uh, you know, few rewards. And, and, and the thing about this trading post is the quests don't have to be extensive or anything crazy. It could be something as simple as a, a slash hug Jaina Proudmore. Yeah, and that's the kind of stuff we're seeing. And yeah, the little things here and there, that's pretty cool. I like it. I do. It's something you could just do to keep busy. Something fun to log in and do that's not a grind. It's like it exists as a Servers thing that they can put things into. Are you fucking trolling me, Cam? If you get my drift. And uh, having you, more things like that in the game is definitely a healthy thing. Control. A lot of other fairly successful MMOs, um, I mean, I don't know how extremely successful Guild Wars 2 is, but it does, I suppose, things a little bit more feeling like this. Obviously, then, there is the the whole Moogle, uh, you know, the, the Moogle store event that FF14 does. It's just good that they've established here a simple, production-friendly way to give players more to do in World of Warcraft, right? That's what's really important. And the reason why I say production-friendly and why I think that's important is because the team size has increased, right? Not all aspects of making a game get faster the more people you have. That's how we have so many high-profile AAA disasters in the industry. But there are certain things where just having a larger team, like just having more artists to make some transmogs to put on the trading post, like that scales up fairly nicely. The other side, obviously, is this is a clear retention system for the game, right? Uh, like, it does obviously work with your WoW sub. As long as you are subs Keep to your WoW, sub alive, you will get some tokens, 500 yep. of this currency per month. On one side, yep. for some people, they'll see coercion there, right? They'll see, oh, they're bribing me to keep my sub by giving me 500 tender. Re! Uh, and then... No, no, just fucking calm down, people. Calm down. I keep my sub alive no matter what. And before, I was doing it for nothing. Now I get something for doing it fantastic i love it great idea just because you don't keep your sub alive doesn't mean no one else should jesus christ people get so angry and the other side would be oh that's kind of nice so if i am sub to the game but i don't get to play that much at least i'll get 500 of the thing and then that makes me interested yep. in value so let's think about money for a second here so the celestial steed is 25 uh, US dollars on the store, right? A thousand tender is therefore, if you kind of scale those things because the steed is 25 USD in the store, but costs 900 tender, then a thousand tender is worth about $28 in value. And I suppose how they have probably sort of computed this out in their heads as being a strong value proposition addition to uh, sort of, you know, value addition to the core World of Warcraft sub is uh, that you have 500 of this tender per month. So based on the pricing of their cosmetics on the store, uh, you are, I mean, you're, you're looking at $14 of cosmetic value uh, being slapped onto your $9.99 month, a month World of Warcraft uh, subscription. Of course, I think it's, what, 15 bucks a month uh, in, in the States. So I just thought that was fairly interesting. Now, this is not me saying, wow, Looks you're like paying... Neurodis. 
Neuro does not ship internationally. Sorry, Sugar Dust. Sorry, feels bad, man. Fifteen dollars, and you're you're getting you're getting fourteen dollars of of free value. <laughs> I'm not saying that I will be falling off the edges. These are guarantee. all digital products. They they don't exist. There's no cost of replication. So, you know, value is in the eye of the person who is, uh, I suppose, being proposed that value. But uh, anyway, I think that when you actually run the maths here, some people could construe this as being a fairly good deal. Therefore, one could quite readily understand how to a lot of people this will feel like a strong addition to their uh, to their subscription uh, it would be in a way that would feel pretty bad though if it was just hey we'll give you you know fun bucks as long as you're VR, wow uh, the real the real value of the tender also comes in because there's then 500 more a month that you actually go and earn that said, yep. it does seem to be a fairly readily uh, earnable thing. It's been nice being excited for season one to drop, then getting some really damn good news, and yeah. it just does me. And this news has been dropping like we didn't we didn't even see this coming. Nobody saw that. Nobody uh, knew about this trading post before now. So this has been like a lot of fun to get like these random features that we didn't even know they were working on. And so far, these random features have been really good. Nice value adds to the game. I mean that overall. I have not felt this good about what I do and this game, the broader picture of things. I haven't felt this good about it in uh, in years. A part of that, I suppose, is because I had a little bit of a three-year-long health saga that was kind of fucking awful. <laughs> um, which, uh, yeah, well, suffice to say, still is an issue, but it's not really a big issue, and it's mostly resolved now. Um, so I suppose also, um, you know... I've had a decent amount of good news, I guess. Um, and uh, just, I don't know, man. It just kind of feels like, oh, yay, the dark times are a little bit over. Because it kind of has it does felt feel like that way sometimes. Has, I mean, god damn, there's a lot of tiresome stuff going on. So, look, it does mean that uh, as I think about how I steer the ship. What was his health? Right thing? now, I you know, it's just shy of 20 people between the, the studio, the channels, everything. As I think about how I'm going to steer the ship. I mean, I'm going to, I don't know, steer it more aggressively. Um, f feeling good about WoW, I really do feel like, damn, how can I raise more funds to, to grow things, to make things cooler, to do more cool shit? Can I head up NI Screen and say, hello, NI Screen, look at this, our patrons are supporting us. Could you match fund this and do a thing, to, you know, do a thing, do a thing, and then I can hire two people from Northern Ireland, and, and then we can do this new project, and then we can have more content. You know, I'm trying to think about all these things to see uh, just how we can make more awesome shit together. So, man, it is exciting times. I love seeing nice Belial Iron. To honestly feel... See, seeing him grow in his, his like, brand and his, his company that he's building. Like, he started just as a, as a WoW YouTuber, and now he's created a gaming company. And I feel like he's always looking to hire more people. And he, he doesn't seem money hungry. He just seems to really want to make stuff. He loves creating. That's why I like this guy. I've always liked Bellular for a long time. A growing sense of confidence in, in <laughs> the where gloves this are game odd is, today. In, I'll uh, agree. You know, where we've invested a lot of our, really a lot of our emotional energy in for, I mean, what percentage of our adult lives? It's a pretty damn high one, eh? Okay. I Sorry, I got a bit rambly towards the end. I'm just feeling good about stuff. I hope you have a wonderful day. Look forward to our Season 1 gearing guide tomorrow. If you'd like some content to watch in the meantime, check out the Dragon series. Have a, have a good one. He, got, he, got, he cut himself off a little bit there. Yeah, what, what I will say about, about Belular and, and everything else is uh, he's great. He's great. I like Belular a lot. I've always liked Belular. I think he's fun to watch, and uh, uh, when I was watching him a lot during Shadowlands, people were always like bitching, they were saying like, oh, Belular hates the game, he just talks shit about the game all the time, and I kept saying, I was like, dude, I don't think Belular hates the game at all. I think he's just being honest because he loves the game, and he wants to see the game do well, and look now. Now that it looks like the game's in a better place, Belular has been loving it. He's been talking nothing but positive about the game. Sam, can you mail me gum if I give you my address? Maybe. Maybe. But we'll... Uh, I'm trying to think how we would do that. I am gonna. I am planning on giving away some Neuro Gum, too, in uh, the Christmas stream, so why don't you just wait for that, Sugar Dust? Maybe you win. Then I'll ship it to you. How about that? Hopefully international shipping isn't too crazy.